Good afternoon and welcome to Oracle's Unified Method Tips and Tricks Part 3. This will be my last uh, video on Oracle Unified Methods. And today we're going to talk about the, the OUM project phases, the five project phases and the 14 processes that are detailed in OUM. And I'll also give some tips to the, some project managers about the Moscow list. So let's get started here. If we go to View Catalog, let me take out the security. One second. We will click on Solution Driven Application Implementation. And we will select the diagram navigation. As you see, OUM project phases are broken down in five phases. Inception, elaboration, construction, transition, and production. Phase one, inception. This is the first phase of the project lifecycle. And the major goal of this phase is to achieve occurrence among all stakeholders. It's just an agreement phase. So here you would get off your kickoff, your high-level business requirements, and what would, be, what would be the initial project plan. As for project plan, I highly recommend use the project plan that comes with Oracle Unified Methodology. The second phase is called the elaboration phase, and here you would develop your requirement models you would partition the solution and you would develop your functional prototype. You'll do a functional prototype and you'd baseline the architecture of the system. So this would be the elaboration phase right here. The third phase is the construction phase where you would focus on the design, the implementation, and testing of functions to develop the complete system. This is usually the longest of all three phases, of all five phases. The transition phase, this is typically your start of your cutover and you've, uh, you've done your system, you, you, you've gone your system through UAT and you've launched the application live. And the last phase, the production phase, is the system is live, you've, uh, you're supporting users, you're monitoring the system, you're doing some system performance, you're maintaining the system your error reporting and your prioritizing issues and we're looking over for, 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 for the next future releases. So these are the five phases now let's go talk about the 14 processes. The 14 processes are as follows. The first phase is called the the first process is called the business requirements these are what we call the RD deliverables uh, the objective of the business requirements is to identify, refine, and prioritize the business requirements for the system that you're proposing. The requirements analysis is the RA deliverables, and the objective of these requirements is to further analyze the requirements from step one and put, and put a process in place to, to, for analysis and design. The third step is the analysis right here, what we call the AN deliverables. And the objective of this phase is to, anal to analyze the processes, refine and structure the system requirements for the analysis model. The design process is, they're all the deliverables that start with a DS and is to translate the requirements to a system design that meets all functional and supplemental requirements. The implementation phase is to develop the final system. To develop the final system, again, through iterative steps. As I've mentioned to you before, OUM is an iterative uh, methodology. It is not waterfall. If you plan to use waterfall on your project, I highly recommend do not use OUM. You're, de you're defeating the purpose. TE, testing. 
all the rules that are testing and this is all an integrated approach to testing it talks about quality levels conformance and testing for the system performance management is the pt deliverables and they're there to define construct and you execute you have to do and you do a, you do performance the performance uh, testing and performance management on these aspects the technical architecture are all the ta deliverables and they're there to for you to design your information system architecture that that the one that you propose into your vision or your in the previous uh, category the data acquisition and conversion as you see here the, those are the cv deliverables within the methodology and they're they're there for all con the data acquisition the conversion process and the, the goal of this is the, this process is to convert to make sure that your conversion of all the legacy data required to run the system is good the documentation here what we call the do deliverables the do deliverables are there to do it for you to obviously develop your documentation to your production manual support documents and everything your organizational change management what we call the OCM deliverables here these are to identify the human and organizational challenges of the project in order to mitigate risk it talks about value propositions uh, change and, and everything like that the training the TR deliverables right here objective here is obviously to train the project team to begin the project and train the users afterwards to run the new system it's all the approach to train the people the TS the transition this is this is uh, the transition is to install the system and go and go in production it's all like a cut over and pre-cut over and go to the system in production operation and support is to monitor and respond the last one here monitor and respond all the um, the processes and the enhancement of problems and to fix errors so these are the again OUM has five phases 14 processes okay so let me get here and go to where I, like I told you before we could go use the method navigation go see OUM full method work breakdown structure here is the out of the box WBS that comes with it. It also comes in Microsoft Project Plan. You can see it talks about all the all the phases. What are the scopes? What are the predecessors? What are the work products? What do you ex what are you expected for each each task? I highly recommend you start with that and you modify it according to your to your needs. Um, the there's three things you know in. Uh, OUM that you need to uh, one thing you know this is a, it's an iterative methodology for, as you as you probably saw from the OUM diagram so uh, when you're elaborating the process in the five phases the inception the elaboration the construction the transition the production you must have noticed some familiar processes from AIM or from Compass from PeopleSoft that compared to uh, the analysis design implementation but you need to you, there's there's a point here that you need to understand you need to understand iterations as a project manager I, uh, you need to understand what an iteration is in OUM there the, the it's an iterative approach so you divide the project time in periods of time so usually from my experiences you make them between three to six weeks depending on how you do it though that's what you call iteration so every three to six weeks you have deliverables to perform so during each of these periods, the team executes these tasks, defines them, be and before the iteration begins. So in each iteration, the team usually executes a little of all the processes. They look again at the diagram, the each vertical slice. Let me close this. They look at also the, the analysts, let's say they look at a certain um the, the use cases and they develop them as the project manager you are responsible for developing this iteration plan so there's a there's a concept called moscow what does moscow mean for the project manager there's a good section on oum on that the moscow list 
is probably the most important tool in mapping an OUM project. Let me see if I could find it right here. The Moscow is the detail. So M, what is absolutely essential for the next for the next iteration. S, what is planned to be ready for the next iteration, but we have a strategy to operate some time. C, what is left out of scope. And W, what is left out of scope for now and probably for the next few increments also. So again, it's a it's a, it's a phase that you do it. You could do it in Excel, you could do it in uh, uh, but it's it's important. It is important to for the project manager to show the the project so that not everything is top priority and you try to and it's important to analyze a class, classify and analyze these scope requirements so how does the project manager evolve the Moscow list there's two ways one you could start with a WBS the work breakdown structure of all the work that needs to be done in a general view Two, you look at the requirements, then you use UML modeling by starting with the actor, goal, and list. Begin by calling this the list of the Moscow list. It's still incomplete, yes, but it's iterative. Then you, then you go to your stakeholders, you look at your requirements team, your project sponsor, and you ask them to prioritize this Moscow list. Sometimes this step should be anticipated before the scope is frozen, but uh, it, it, you could obviously do it incrementally. Then you would then create a new column for the f further ordering of the requirements, and put them if we we put them as um, M for first, then S for second, and C to ignore. So again, this was my last session. Let me close this. Um, it was a pleasure. Um, the Again, let's not forget control left to find. OUM is iterative. Uh, focus on the five phases and the 14 processes. Project managers, use your Moscow. Use the out-of-the-box Microsoft project plan. And um, if you there's there's a lot of good information on the internet on Oracle's website also blogs.oracle.com if you need more further information. Thank you so much, and uh, it was a pleasure. It was my last video on OUM, and please provide me your comments.